Hello there gorgeous gamers and welcome back to Pure Play TV and we've got another review for you and this one is Ghosts and Goblins Resurrection, a brand new entry in the Ghosts and Goblins series and yeah it's coming out in 2021, who'd have thought, but is it any good? Well let's have a gander. It's been over 30 years, but Ghosts and Goblins is back with another brutally hard 2D side-scrolling adventure. The Ghosts and Goblins series had a reputation for being wicked hard before being wicked hard was cool. Now, 30 years later, Capcom has brought this side-scrolling classic back from the dead. But is this Ghosts and Goblin Resurrection a watered-down copy of the real thing, or does it manage to bring the core gameplay and hardcore nature of the original? First of all, if you finish the original Ghosts and Goblins, you're a badass in my book. I never did, which should be no surprise, considering I'm an average at best player. But I finished this one, and I really enjoyed it. Don't get me wrong, it's still really hard, maybe even harder if you play it on the highest difficulty, but Capcom has added a surprisingly robust set of difficulty options. I chose the second easiest option, and I still filled my house with so many swear words for the next 8 hours. There's also an option to slow down gameplay, which, yeah, I abuse that to hell and back. But you get the idea, I'm not very good. Let's move on. If you are a hardcore purist, then these options probably sound like blasphemy. Just remember, they can never take Bloodborne away from you. You've still got that, my dears. And also don't forget, there is more to Ghosts and Goblins than merely being difficult. The hand-drawn environments are beautifully depicted and full of colour, despite the macabre environments. Graveyards, fiery pits and haunted forests, they all look quite inviting. These are beautiful reimaginings of the original levels and themes, but it also reminds me of the fantastic Salt and Sanctuary. The artwork in that game is more gritty and dark soulsy, while the art in Ghosts and Goblins doesn't take itself so seriously. For instance, our hero, Arthur, starts with a full set of armour. As he takes damage, he loses armour until he is eventually wearing nothing but a pair of boxes with love hearts all over them. Plus, Arthur still has his cartoony and exaggerated running style from the original game, and it's all about pumping the knees and elbows. Gotta get them up, that's how you get speed. This is especially awkward because despite how hard it looks, like he's running, everything on screen feels twice as fast as him. Almost everything on offer in Ghosts and Goblins Resurrection truly honours the original. Unfortunately, this has reminded me that the good old days weren't perfect. Only being able to fire my weapons in four directions, left, right, up and down, is maddeningly frustrating and dated. Plus, I think that I personally can jump further than Arthur, despite my arthritic knees. This makes the many platforming sections unnecessarily frustrating, and while we're at it, a dodge or roll button might have kept me from scaring the neighbours with my colourful language. The developers ripped the story directly from the original, and most other 80s games on the NES actually, and it goes something like this. Rescue the pretty princess from the clutches of some purely evil creature. Fleshing out the old story would have been great, but aside from a 30 second opening scene, you won't find any more storytelling until the end. This feels like a missed opportunity to me, but it's a small gripe, and I still enjoyed the game all the same. You'll stumble on 8 different weapons, such as staples like daggers, a lance, a hammer, boulders, and a strange blue torch that I think is holy water. Most of these are thrown or rolled, except for the hammer, which instead sends a shockwave when it hits the ground. Each one has its strengths and weaknesses. I used them all but typically felt most comfortable with the dagger. I could throw them so fast, and it lent itself nicely to my typical spray and pray playstyle. You will also collect umbral bees, which you can use to upgrade Arthur's magic and combat skills at a giant skill tree. This too reminded me of Salt and Sanctuary in the best way possible. There are 5 zones in the game, and these will take you anywhere between 6 hours to 100 lifetimes to complete, depending on which difficulty you select. It turns out that if you select the easiest difficulty setting, you will be resurrected right where you died, effectively granting you immortality. Ghosts and Goblins Resurrection is a fitting return for the franchise, with only a few missteps. If you love 2D side-scrollers and rescuing princesses, then Ghosts and Goblins Resurrection should put a tingle in your heart-covered boxes. 
it did in mine. And that is the end of this review. Thank you very much for watching. If you made it to the end, fantastic. Do us a favour, go on down below, hit the like and subscribe buttons, and give that bell icon a little nudge so that you're notified whenever we've got new stuff. Go to the info box and you'll find our social media channels, website links, and our supporters page where you can support the team, if you can. Or you can click that join button on YouTube and do whatever that is. I've been Chris, you've been gorgeous, and I'll see you on the next one. Until then, bye bye.